white vinegar. It doesn't have to be seaweed, but white vinegar. I pour white vinegar in. I pour white vinegar in here. Salt, sweet. It's showing the check hybrid system. Although I've reset the code and um, it has driven, let me see if this will even come back again. Yeah, that's a check hybrid system, check VSC system on the car. And it doesn't switch to hybrid again. So we'll run the scan and see what we get. So these are the, these are the codes we get here. We get um, P087F, P080. These are the codes we have. These are paint on the face frame. The freeze frame data is going to show you what, will ha what was happening before that uh, computer stored the code. And this is what we have on the freeze frame here. But all this information, these are, are not that important. These are what, this is what is important. You can see here, this is 15.98. You can see on the free stream here, block um, 5 was dropping really bad. And block 4 alongside with it was... Block 4, block four alongside with it was dropping low relatively to the rest. And um, you can see block 8 too is dropping low. And 11. So this uneven, this imbalance is going to really disrupt the computer system. And I believe the bus bar deteriorating would cause this whole thing to be dropping like this so I believe that this battery will need block 5 replaced maybe one cell on block 4 one cell on block 8 and one cell on block 11 um, probably six cells that are solid should do this work or probably we might just also need to clean the bus bus to make this work these are the freeze frame not the live data if we go to the live data now so this is live data here. You can see all the block voltages because the car has been running on engine. It has not switched to hybrid. So I believe block um, five, you can see block five is up and doing here on the live data. And um, you think everything is fine. But then when you apply load to it, you can see it should drop quickly. Uh, you can see that. And this is battery deterioration. I turned on the AC and um, let me switch to my other scanner. Let's see what we have. So we're connecting this to my car using my app. On my so this is the live data screen on the car. You can see all the battery block voltage going um, yellow, 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 which they should be on green most of the time. You can see battery state of charge at 39%. Delta state of charge here at 0.64. And um, you can see block 5 being way tall staying not even fluctuating as much and um i think we have a problem with block eight as well and you see the block closer to this block five uh also going to be having um a whole lot of stress uh, i will take down this battery take it apart and we're going to see live what um is wrong with the battery and how we we'll go about fixing it so it's the next thing now and i've taken down the battery i'll put a link, link link in the description below on how to take down the battery on my other video so the service plug and the negative terminal I'm taking out taking down the battery and we're going to be diagnosing it soon so this is the battery down already and the battery is counted from this point here to this point that's where the ec is sitting to this point if it, if it, is, if it is on the car it's counted from right to left so we're having challenge with block five, eight, and the rest. So this is counted two by two. Block one, two, three, four, five. Definitely we're having problems somewhere here. These two cells will be replaced. Then block eight, two we identify. I'm going to be taking the multimeter to measure each of them one by one. And um, I'll be cleaning the fan too. It has um, dust inside. I'll be cleaning the fan too. And uh, let me have a look at the buzz bars. See the condition of the buzz bars. Buzz bars are not that dirty. They wouldn't need much of a cleaning. Um, this battery has been worked on before. Let me check the buzz bars at the rear too. This is the buzz bar at the rear. They have a tiny bit of a corrosion on them. Um, probably I'll just clean them just for the fun of it. Not like um, it's necessarily need to be cleaned uh, that much. Uh, I'll, then I'll put them. Um, the electric grease or Vaseline on it 
petroleum jelly, not just any of Vaseline, so that um, it wouldn't corrode um, next time. So let's take this thing apart. So I'm about taking out all the buzzers. It helps to have a power tool when you're taking apart all this. That way your work is going to be fast. I prefer taking apart this back one here, this um, front one that has the wire first. That way uh, there will be no mistake. There we have the wire snap in the bottom. There you go. So I'm gonna pull this one from underneath here. Mm -hmm. There you go. So if you look at this post by here, you see that they have a bit of a corrosion here. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm going to be cleaning it. Very clean. It's gonna get it's gonna get very clean that the conduction is gonna be very fine. Now let me show you guys something. If you look right behind here, this is the sensing cable. Look right behind here. You see that it has corroded. So this will cause resistance on this bus bar hereby making this computer that senses it think that the battery is bad. Meanwhile, this bus bar is the one not make, make, making this computer receive full voltage so we're going to be cleaning it. it's going to get sparkling new let me lose the back side and then uh, we'll get we'll continue the video so i'm taking about the rear the rear side of the bus bars which i'll be cleaning so this one still has a bit of corrosion on them as you can see so i'll be cleaning them too so now like i said the block five on this battery here is the major challenge on it. So I'm going to be using a multimeter here to show us all we have on block 5. Set it to 20 volt DC. This DC is AC voltage. This DC voltage. So DC is what you'll be using. And um, if your multimeter is actually functional, it's working fine. So this is block 1 here. Show you guys. This is block 1. Block one cell number one. We have 7.94. Block one cell number two, 7.93. So the voltage difference between each of these cells shouldn't be up to 0 0.5 volts. You understand? If it's above if it's if it's above 0 0.5 volts, you'll be having problems balancing the cells. Uh, you can see 7.89. This is um this is block three. Second cell on block three, seven point eight. You can see voltage difference isn't that much. Seven point eight, this is block four. We'll soon get to block five. I'm gonna be seeing the obvious difference. See this one's no longer seven point eight, seven point seven because it's closer to the failing block. You can see it has dipped here. You can see this is the this is the cell that failed. We have six points here. So I'll be needing my, um, I'm going to be marking it with this meter. We have this cell field. So in order for me to have a proper balance cell where I wouldn't have um, problems in the future, this one, two, three, four, and five, I'll be taking these two apart. You can see here, 7.7. So I'll be taking one, two, three. Because the failure of these cells must have stressed these two cells here. If I just replace this one, the car would work, but I would the car would still come back again, not after a very short while, because this two has suffered the stress that this one is supposed to be carrying. These two have suffered. Let's continue our test. 
you can see that has gone up 7.8 so if you monitor here we have 7.8 here okay this is okay this is close to it let's check 7.8 here you can see 7.8 here while the two cells close to the failing failing cell are suffering a whole lot so as i always advise that you change the cell that are close to the cell that failed now this cell failed this is 6.6 .6. now you have to replace these two alongside two or less you would have to do the job again no sorry this is it i think i would have to mark this so i'll mark this cell as failed and you will notice that the two cells close to it the two module close to it are the one dropping this is not close to it because it's 7.8 this is close to it 7.7 .7. this is the failed cell 6.6.5 6 .6. this is close to the failed cell 7.7 .7. so these two have taken the toll that this one has suffered so if you just go ahead and say okay i have only one failing cell you just replace this one and you put this two back in you would have a problem in the future you definitely have a problem the car would come back again for repair now let's see the ones that are further away from it you can see here i have 7.8 i have 7.8 7.8 7 7.8 7.8 you can see here too i think this is block eight we should count and we'll confirm that this is block eight because you see, on the live data, block 8 was showing us that everything was fine. There was no complaint. But on the freeze frame, if you bought us, I always say, check your freeze frame whenever you get a code, P0880 or any battery. Go check your freeze frame. It, it tells you a whole lot. Now, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. You see? I wasn't even sure. But this is block 8. On the freeze frame data, we had... We had we had it recorded that block 8 had also failed. So here, now, I think we'll be changing... This is 7.8. In this kind of case, you might just replace just this guy. Because this guy would fail under load. It might not fail under normal driving, but it will fail under load. You can see 7.6. 7.8. So this guy will be replaced. So we'll be replacing, we'll be replacing one, two, three, four. So, let's see. Let's continue counting. Let's block eight. No. Continue. I think on our freeze frame we had a problem with block twelve, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I don't know. It was yesterday that I think this measurement. So it's very important that you check your freeze frame whenever you get the code. You just you don't just say, hey, I have a P0880 or I have a block nine failure and you just replace block nine. You would have a problem. Understand? After replacing these failed cells, we are still going to be balancing this battery. I will show you guys how I actually balance the battery within one hour. Although I'm going to be fast tracking it though. You can see this one too. Am I taking the wrong measurement? 7.8. 7.8. Seven point eight. So if you can follow these steps here to replace your cells, I think you're not going to be doing the job two times over. Once you replace it, following these steps, you're going to enjoy the job that you did. Especially if you don't have a cell like this one on block 8 that fails under load. And if you notice, getting down to block 17, the voltage gets higher. That's because the battery draws more, the car draws more power from this middle voltage, from these middle cells. And these middle cells also heat up faster. That is why you can see that the cells here and the cells here, they tend to have higher voltage. Now, while I'm balancing the battery, I'll take out the field cells. Then while I'm balancing the battery, I'll make sure that the cells at the end here, I'll put them in the middle. Then the ones at the middle, I'll spread them to the end. Then I'll balance the battery, make sure that each of them have, each of the cells has even voltage. That way, once you are done with this job, it will be, it will be something very nice to last long you won't have a return job. So probably we're going to be replacing one, two, three, four. Then while I take it apart to balance it, I'll see if I can get a couple of cells that I can interchange as well. So let me take it apart and show you guys what we're going to be doing. They take the battery apart. Quickly if I take the battery apart, I'll show you guys something. This is the temperature sensor, the outside temperature sensor. 
you need to be careful with this temperature sensor while you are taking the battery apart careful with it because it's usually very fragile that it snaps here and once this temperature sensor snaps and you assemble your battery that the car might not start you would have this temperature sensor code too whenever you're working on this battery you need to be careful for the sensors okay. now it's important to take note of your battery orientation on the tree so that when you are putting it together you wouldn't have problems although they made this thing full proof but i still usually do this this is it this is negative here so mark this space here negative then here it's positive i mark here positive that way while i'm putting my battery together i will not have the error of starting the putting the positive and negative here you would have problems so i want to take down this battery over actually take it apart there you go that's several screws holding it down so i'll quickly take it apart then i'll get back to the video so i have um taken apart this tree um, Set the side. Um, these are the rear temperature sensors. It has not just temperature, it also has retainers. You can notice here that these two here are in the middle, these two uh, are the ends, monitoring the um, temperatures of the battery to know when to turn on the fan here, that fan over there, which is dirty. I'll clean it. And you notice this one here is on block one, the red one is on block one. White one should be around block seven, yeah, block five or block seven. And this one is around block ten and nine. And this one is always on block seventeen. So I like well while I'm assembling this together, I usually like bringing this to closer to the middle, so that the heat when the heat here when the heat here rises in the middle, the fan can quickly turn on. So these are the retainers. Don't lose them. They have this. They keep these guys. Together neatly. So I'll take this it's an assembly. Set it aside. And I have this one. Yeah, it's uh I think I'll give it here with you. Yes. So it's time to actually take this guy apart. Now taking apart this battery, in order for it to be easy for you to put it together. You don't lose this you don't lose it from here block one you lose it on block 17 that's way it'll be easier for you to put together come let me show you something if you look here has like a notch you can see this two notch that holds this pipe this two notch hold this pipe while this one here doesn't have that notch it's just an open pipe just an open pipe let me see there you go you can see this is an open pipe and this one has a retainer stopper here so this one here will hold this pipe for you to take this knot away so you always lose your battery take your battery apart from block 17. so i'll be having this one and then here so we'll take a measurement again of all our block of, of, our, of all our cells and measure and take a um, measurement and mark the ones that will be taken out We'll do that again. So I should take note of the voltages. Take very close note of the voltages. Here. 7.9. You can see the end of the ones that are close to the end there are usually high voltage. A bit higher than the ones at the middle. 7.9. 7.8 you can see the higher the more i'm getting close to the middle the voltage drops this is 7.5 you see i missed this i missed it that's why it's usually very good for you to go over it again and again that way you wouldn't miss the voltage to be sure that this is not my meter messing with me this is 7.8 and this is 7.5 i believe this would have shown on our on our freeze frame if we can go back to check the freeze frame data when i was reviewing it this would have shown on our freeze frame this guy would fail on that load we're going to mark in this guy out as well as failed uh, this is block two cell two and then mark it yep two cell two one two three four five five of it they will be balancing the rest let me show you guys where the vent that i was talking about is 
this is the car on the priorities it should be around here on the 400 h and highlander it's around this downside now on this camera this way is this is where the battery take cool cool air in from having this bag here isn't the problem but when the bag falls and blocks it like this then we have a problem the battery will struggle to take in cold air so have all this information in mind so while i'm setting apart this i will be setting it apart like uh, this is the top part so that i have things mixed up while i'm balancing this is the top part so i get to the feeling self this one too and see flipping them so while they are going in remember i want to start this in the middle they are going in this goes here so these ones here the ones that are in the middle Okay, take it together like this. So, goes like this. Now, this guy is going up. This guy. Come here. This tree going out. is going out this guy comes here so basically I'm taking out five cells five of it while I'm balancing if I still find any one that I need to take apart I'll take it apart thank you this is the this is the equipment cell that I got although they, they are used cells but they are pretty strong the ones I got the cells from um, a GX battery. The GX actually got involved in a total accident. So we bought this cells from the battery stuff. The battery voltage might drop here, but we are sure that it dropped out of usage, not out of the fact that the cell failed. So now let's take a measurement of it. Now we have here 7.8. Uh, we don't really have much of a drop, 7.8. Seven point eight, seven point eight, seven point eight, seven point seven nine nine, seven point eight two, and uh, seven point eight eight. So now, what I'll be doing, I'll be using five cells out of the six here that I have here to install for the replacement of the star. But then, what I'll be doing, I won't just be replacing it just like that. What I'll do first is, I'll first install all these batteries in parallel, connect all the terminals together to make all of them have this equal voltage, connect all the terminals together, let it sit for like two hours to see if all of them would have balanced out each other since the voltage really isn't that high. And um, what I'll be doing actually is, um, these are the cells that I took out from the front side, this one is from the front side. So I'll be tallying this one here, these new cells, with the ones that I took out from the middle. Like I said, remember I said that I want to take the battery cells in the middle, put them to the edge, then the ones at the edge will be at the middle. So I'll be tallying these ones here with the cells in the middle. Then, when I want to reassemble it, that's how it's going to be. But for now, let me try to balance out each of the cells. Now, you see what I'll be doing here. You can see this is negative. And this is the middle cells. This guy here too is negative. I'm not mixing nothing. This is just for the balancing. Here yeah, it's positive, then this is negative. So that's what I'll be doing for everything. Then I'm um, just carrying guessing. You can see, uh, as you can see, I've numbered everything from one to 34 cells. So that way, 
when I when I'm done balancing it and I want to um, take it apart to put it back together, I wouldn't mix things up. I would know that okay, this one stays on block one, this one stays on. So that way I wouldn't mix the cells that I was supposed to put in the middle in the end and the ones that are supposed to be at the end of the middle. Right number them up. Now I want to show you guys something how I actually do this balancing here. You can see here we have 7.89 here. I just want to skip it through quickly. We have 7.7 .7 here. Okay, check here. We have 7.85 here. Check here. We have 7.85 cool. Now I'm going to be 7.85. These are almost balanced. But let me quickly come up here. You can see 7.9 we have there. 7.9. So 7.9. Now check here. We have 7.85. So the average should be 7.85. But uh, some of them are giving me 7.7. .7. Some of them are giving me 7.7. .7. So now give me 7.84. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this cable here. It's a conductive material, it can conduct electricity, it can conduct voltage. So I'm going to be using the cable here to actually match all these guys here to contact each other. Then I'll let it sit for a while. Some batteries, if their voltage difference is very, very high, not like this ones, their voltage difference is very, very high. After connecting them in parallel, you would have to let them sit for 24 hours. But this one's voltage difference is not so high. So I believe um, an hour or two is going to correct this one. So this one I'm going to be doing, this is the knot here. The knot will be the one that would uh, retain them. You can see. See, I'm crossing it through. This is just um, like a clutch cable that I got from a bike. So I'll be using this knot here. To run them through together then this other side too i'll be doing the same thing i'll just have it run through like this make sure that it contacts properly no one is skipped unless you miss balancing that one so that way each of these cells are going to be sharing voltage like you know the way potential difference work it moves from the higher potential difference to lower potential to lower potential difference so that's how voltage works, move from a higher point to a lower point. So while it's moving like that, it will keep moving around each other from the higher point to the lower point until all of them has no voltage to share with each other. That's how it works. So cross them like this, all right? Cross them like this. Now let it sit for like um, two to three hours, but I'll be coming back to check them, see. Now. That's how it is. Then what I'll do is help me put them apart. And I'll connect them with this knot. I'll just have them tied snug, not tied all the way, just to have contact. That's all I'll be doing. Just to have contact. If you check here now. The third part voltage, since it's going to be parallel, is going to be the average of all the cell. So, at the end of the day, we should be having a balanced um, cell of around 7.86 or 7.85 for each of the cells, all through parallel down. So, this is the total part voltage now. Get me? So, while we let this one sit to balance itself out, let me show you guys something here. Taking out the bus bars on this guy isn't that difficult or tricky. But taking out on this guy, you have to be careful because sometimes this guy here gets brittle here. And while you are trying to take out this um, bus bar here, this guy gets broken. So this is how I usually take it out. I use a very tiny screwdriver like this. I put it behind here. I don't know if you can get this. Put it behind here. Pull it off because it has like a stopper here. Put it behind here. Take this one off. Then this guy has like a tab here. I press this tab, put it behind. My boss bar is out. Let me take that again. Put it behind here. Put it out. Press this tab down. Take it out. That's simple. So that's how I take out my boss bars. And I don't really suffer the edge of this 
voltage sensing wires because if you do you might end up breaking it this guy to the same thing so what i do for this bus bars is i take like a tiny sandpaper smooth surface i hold it on this edge here and i try to clean i clean only the side that touches the bus bars i'll do it for all of them so that my terminal senses well this two i'll do the same thing for this two but as for the bus bars that's not what i do i'm going to repeat this one do it properly as for the bus bars, I use white vinegar. White vinegar. It doesn't have to be seaweed, but white vinegar. I pour white vinegar in. I pour white vinegar in here. Into my bus bars. Like I create like a solution. Then I add salt to it. Add salt to the solution. So once I add salt to it, then I'll try to mix it up. Then uh, okay, I'll mix it up. Add it mixed until I see no salt visible there. Again, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like afterwards. You see what happens to all the pollution there. And when I'm done with this solution, I'm going to be using baking soda, baking soda to clean. I'll show you guys what I use baking soda for after this, as I try to set and get some clean. So that's basically how I clean the bus bar. So I'm going to be waiting for like one hour, come back to the battery, check each of them, their voltages, then I'll have this guy cleaned. That's pretty much how I do it. I see it. Here, yeah, I've had um, the bus bars sat down for pretty much a while here. Now. So you can see what they look like. I've not even used my baking soda for it. I can see how good as new it is. No stress, just good as new. And you are not even filing it down with some paper to break, cut down the um, thickness of the bus bars. I've had, I've had a situation whereby um, it was filed down so thin that it was throwing trouble called piece ray A6. So, this is the way to go. This is the best way to upgrade. Right? Now, I've also um come to check for this guy here. He's been sitting down for close to two hours now. So, I've come to check the voltages here. I'll have it measured and you guys are going to see what it's actually showing. Let me see. You focus on the meter. You see the average that it's giving me 786, 787 is what I'm getting. All of them. So no one is at seven eight five, seven eight four, seven seven nothing. So you can see, measuring in them, one by one, and I'm getting equal balanced voltage. So this way my car will start up and all the battery are balanced. So I'll still let it sit while I clean this bus bus. I've also had the fan cleaned here. You can see there is no dust on it. It's already clean now so i would have um these guys taken out i'll be cleaning them with the baking soda so here you have it you can see i've not even cleaned it with the baking soda and it's already looking this clean so i'll be using the baking soda to dry it off so that the chemical reaction would actually stop happening so i won't have that chemical reaction still going on the battery pack you can see how clean it is how clean it is so i'll be cleaning everything not to bore you guys out of camera now we are done cleaning now you can see what it looks like after cleaning you can see that there is no more con um corrosion on the bus bars you can see this contact is going to be very clean so i'm going to be installing the back on the casings now i'll take all these ones apart i believe they are all balanced out now take these ones all apart now and we're going to see what it looks like so now um you can see i've taken out all the cables that i used to balance the voltage and you see that each of the cells are giving us even voltage coming up and, um, you can see here uh, 7.6 7. so it's all balanced and even to the top now and, um, so 
to know. Um, one thing that I want you guys to remember is why we were taking apart this battery. There were some points when I was marking the tree for positive and negative. Then I realized that it would be better if we even mark this plastic. It's because I am already very familiar with this system. That's why I know that um, this is block 17. This is where block 17 is. So, and that this is where block 1 is. So this place here should be having negative here. So I'll start out with having my negative right there. So there you go, this number one. I'm gonna be flipping it to be negative. So I've had everything stacked up together and I've confirmed that I don't have um, any positive or positive at one line, one end here. So this is where my block one, this is where my block 17 is. So I'm going to be turning it over and um, having the whole thing back together in reverse order of how I actually assembled it. So guys, um, I'm about to totally assemble this battery, but there's something I usually do that I've never recorded in my videos. I usually use this petroleum jelly, this petroleum jelly, to coat the terminals of the battery to make sure that it doesn't quickly corrode next time. The corrosion would usually doesn't happen again after this. Because corrosion causes high resistance. And this high resistance is actually what affects the voltage distribution of the battery to the battery voltage sensor. So you can see this is what I'll do. I use toothbrush and Vaseline to actually put this petroleum jelly. But if you have access to dielectric grease, you can also use that too. So once I do this, I don't make it too much. Once I do this, well actually before I use any petroleum jelly, I usually use uh, my multimeter to check if it um very very non-conductive by checking for continuity inside the petroleum jelly so once i do this once i do this i'll do it for both back and forth all the terminals like this so that corrosion would not occur and this battery is going to last even longer for the client once i do this for all the terminals I usually never get a comeback for the battery due to high corrosion. So I do this here and I do it for the back end to assemble the battery. So we have assembled the battery, I will be about putting it back into the car. So once we put it back into the car, it will um, um there's something I usually like doing after assembling my battery. Once I start the battery, I'm gonna do what I call the system tune you know. up. I'll be taking all these plugs apart and I'll show you guys though. Let me not bore you guys with it. So we just had all the plugs cleaned now and um, we're trying to dust the air filter out. Yeah. So we'll be cleaning the air flow meter too and we'll be dumping the tank as well. Basically, um, we've assembled the car now. Everything here is done. And I've um, put back the battery, assembled this back here. So I'm about starting the car now. The first thing I'll do when I want to start, start the car is um, actually before I even start the car, I, thought, I prefer scanning for code first. Turn on the ignition. Once I turn on the ignition, I will check if it's showing. Check hybrid system. Let me close the trunk. Close the boot for me. So the trunk and doors are closed. So you can see it has no error message on the dashboard. This is a very good sign that everything was assembled properly if the things were not assembled properly you would see um a sign there then i would also scan here for codes so i go into hybrid control then i go to okay i go to trouble codes and you can see trouble codes are not detected i've not started this car 
so I should also go to engine management system and um, I should see if we have any codes there and, um, no error codes are there so yeah now I can start the car but first start the car I'll be plugging my um, other scan tool to see what my battery looks like before I start it up so there you can see my speed on it of which I'm not supposed to be stressing it this much but because of the confidence I have in the battery you can see it's moving fine with no check hybrid system on the dashboard uh, so I'll be going for a spin and um, putting on the load soon so I have um, started I've driven it for close to 10 minutes and I'm about to apply load to it as you can see battery set of charge here is um, 68.5% because I wasn't draining any energy at all out of it so now I'll be driving on hybrid mode for quite a while you can see the voltage difference now has come up a bit it's not even up to 1 volt it's just 0 0.1 volt so I'll be driving it now this is the 12 volt battery charge temperature is very fine because I drag the sensors right there in between so let's watch um, the drive now so I'm already driving now and uh, I've not switched to engine yet I think this um, car usually switches to engine mode when it's up over 40 something kilometers per hour See how long I can stay on battery mode, or how long I can drive with battery mode. If you can get up to, um, can get up to ten miles for me. Fine. Uh, kilometers, is some kilometers. So I'll watch it. Just driving on battery mode with the AC on. successfully worked and um, still on hybrid mode as you can see everything proper no check engine lights no check VSC no check every system so that's pretty much it that's it thanks for watching